Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Creepy Fox Podcast and the first video of 2022. Today we'll be covering stories that have been sent in by subscribers like yourself who have served in the military. I'd like to say thank you for your service and for the bravery you've shown throughout your careers. These experiences will be retelling some of the things that they've gone through, including while on duty and off duty as well. Now, before we get into it, if you are a new viewer and you'd like to join in on our St. Jude's Children's Research Charity, you can check it out right below the video player. This was something I began and organized back last year, and we'll be continuing it again this year. It's a great way for us to give back to kids who are going through a hard time. Now, with that quick message out of the way, let's jump right into these true and scary military stories sent in by subscribers like yourselves. Enjoy. I'm a retired military policeman and I served with the US Army back around 2007. I want to take you back to this one night where we ended up saving a wonderful family. They considered us heroes, but to tell you the truth, I was just doing my duty. One evening, myself along with a fellow Marine were in this quiet, peaceful Middle Eastern town and we were doing some shopping. This was something we rarely did mainly because of the normal patrols and routines we were instructed to do. So this evening was pretty much a treat. Now we're going to call my friend Ruby. Ruby and I were in a shopping district that sold different foods and delicacies. Now obviously we were still armed, but since we were so close to base, we were a little more comfortable here as opposed to maybe being out in the middle of the desert. I forgot how long we were there for, but all of a sudden, this little girl, who I want to say was about 9 years old, comes up to us crying. We were confused. So in the native tongue, we had spent years studying. Ruby responds back by saying, Hey there, sweetheart. Are you okay? What's wrong? I'll translate what she said here. There's this really bad man who's drunk that broke into my house. My mom's still there. Please, you have to help her. Don't worry, honey. We'll help your mom but you have to be brave for us. Ruby and I both have a background with law enforcement, so we jumped into action. First thing we did was we called for backup because we weren't sure how many people we were going to be dealing with and if they had any powerful weaponry. Of course, the girl did tell us there was one, but you just never know. Anyway, she showed us the way and we arrived at this home that was on the outskirts of town. It looked really old and abandoned, and we were starting to think that we had been tricked. But no, instead I went ahead and called out towards the house. Hello, is anyone in there? Look, we don't want anybody to get hurt, so can you please come out and talk to us? A window then opens and we can see the home intruder along with the mom. The man had a mask over his face and we could also clearly see what looked to be like a revolver. He now started to demand that we get him as much money as possible, along with a getaway vehicle. Ruby now went on the radio and now advised backup to stay out of sight, or this man might get anxious and do something that he would later regret. Be advised, we have a woman held up in a home by a man that's armed. Proceed with caution as you make your way over here. What happens next is Ruby and I telling the man that we had just called for his request of money in a vehicle that would be on its way. Really, we were planning on saving this woman. After about 10 minutes of talking and reassuring him, with backup hiding in the shadows, with their rifles pointed at the house, things went silent for about a minute, which felt like an eternity. Now luckily, there was a man who offered us his car so we could announce that we would be giving him his getaway vehicle. Plus, we also told him the money was already in there. Roughly 30 seconds later, the man walks the woman out at gunpoint to the car and now advises her to step inside. This was now our opportunity. Just as the woman takes a seat, and she's far enough from the armed man, one of her fellow soldiers who was there as her backup takes the finishing shot, neutralizing the threat. With our fellow officers and soldiers, we run up to the car and we were able to get the woman to safety, who's obviously crying, but relieved to be safe. At the end of the day, we were considered heroes for our quick thinking. Had it not been for us shopping there, and us jumping into action the way we did, things might have turned out so much worse. 
They say dogs are a man's best friend, and I have to say I agree with that statement. This is a story about how my partner saved my life. Back in the late 1990s, I used to be a military policeman who was in charge of patrolling a U.S. base in the Pacific. Pretty much my job was just to patrol the area and make sure nobody tried to sneak in or do anything else bad. Thankfully, I wasn't alone. I had my three-year-old German Shepherd, Toby. Toby was amazing. He was pretty much trained to detect danger and had helped us out on so many different occasions. Well, one night, I had been doing my usual routine when Toby suddenly started to whine. So I go ahead and pull to the side of the road, thinking he needs to use the restroom. Toby then walks over to a nearby tree and starts to pee. I waited for him by the car for about a minute, and then suddenly he takes off. He started barking like crazy, and I could hear rustling of branches and leaves. Confused by this noise, I began to call out to Toby. Toby, come on boy, get back here. It's time to get back on patrol. No answer. Annoyed, I go ahead and grab my flashlight and head off into the small jungle. As I searched for Toby, I had this really bad feeling. I don't know if it's just me, but does anybody else get that feeling like somebody's watching you? It's like a sixth sense is telling you that somebody's nearby. That's what I was feeling as I searched for Toby. Eventually, I reached a clearing and I could see Toby pacing back and forth. There you are, Toby. Come on, boy, let's go back. He finally listened to me and we started to make our way back to the cruiser. Unfortunately for me, I hadn't taken the time to check the trees above me. What I mean is that I soon heard somebody drop down to the floor below. Toby perked up and started to bark again. I myself called out thinking that somebody might have been following us. I mean, Toby was still whining, so something was definitely off. Hello, is anybody out there? This area is restricted. If you're a civilian, you have to turn back now. No response. Toby and I continue to back down this trail and all of a sudden, I feel this huge weight hit me. I fall to the ground and hit the floor hard. And when I turn back up and look, there is a man in a ski mask wrestling me down, trying to take my pistol away from my belt. If that wasn't scary, the guy has a knife. He was trying to stab me with it. Thank God I did move my arms in the way of his swipes, but he did manage to connect a few times. Seconds later, Toby goes into full protective mode. He jumps right on top of this man with all his weight and proceeds to bite down on his arm with all his might. This causes the man to drop the knife, and then I go to getting this guy in cuffs. But I'll tell you, the cuts were stinging really bad. So, to say the guy was looking at taking somebody out while out here in the jungle would be an understatement of the century. He later confessed that he had planned this all along, and I'm pretty sure that if it weren't for Toby being there with me, I probably wouldn't have been here to tell this story. So thanks, Toby. You're the best. I'm a Marine veteran, and back in 2004, I was deployed in the Middle East. This was during the peak of the conflict the United States had entered itself into, so we at the time saw many firefights. Sadly, I did see many of my fellow brothers get killed, but the kind memories they left behind still stick with me to this day. So, let me tell you about this really creepy night that was one of the many highlights of my tour. One evening, we had just finished patrolling a small town. After we had cleared the area and located what we had come for, we now started to head back to base. It was quite a bit of a walk, but we figured we would patrol the nearby desert to ensure no enemy fighters had been called for backup. Speaking of this desert, we had to be very careful due to how open it is. There were a few buildings here and there, and someone could have easily been in a sniping position to pick us off one by one. It was scary, but being used to being taken out at any given time was something we had grown accustomed to. Eventually, we did reach a set of homes that we went ahead and checked out yet again. My friend Andrew and I had been clearing the homes when we were able to hear yelling from outside. No shots, so I figured perhaps they probably saw someone. So Andrew and I go outside to see what the commotion was about. Hey, what's up with the yelling? Where are those two going? 
Oh, we saw someone walking towards us, but they suddenly turned around and went over the mound. The others went to go follow them to make sure somebody wasn't trying to follow us and give our position away, the soldier said. Fair enough. We went ahead and proceeded to follow after them, and once we were about to go over the mound of sand, we each heard the sounds of gunshots. This sent us into a panicked frenzy as we hit the ground, and we prepared for a firefight. We must have waited there for about 15 seconds before all went silent. One of us went ahead and peeked over the sand, and we could see two of our fellow marines hiding behind a large rock. Here's what ended up happening. As it turned out, they had been in a firefight with two armed men. Our best guess was they were waiting to ambush us just as soon as we went over that sandy desert mound. Safe to say, they were taken out, and had my fellow buddies not seen the guy who had been checking us out and then ran off, and those marines hadn't seen those armed men to take him out, things might have turned out differently. It's sure a scary thought. That keeps us up all at night. Now, this story took place back in the late 1990s. I'm male, and at the time, I was 22 years old. I had joined the marines back then, and I was stationed in Japan. Though I didn't fight in any sort of conflict, I did have one experience that almost cost my life. Strangely enough, it wasn't even when I was on duty. Anyways, during the month of December, I returned to visit my family in the States right before Christmas. It was supposed to be your average ordinary holiday. Opening presents, eating plenty of food, and just all in all, relaxing. It was a cold snowy day in northern Michigan, and my little sister and I had been driving around town. We were doing some last minute Christmas shopping, and we had just so happened to be in the mood for some hot chocolate. There was this small mom and pop shop that we liked to visit, that had some of the best hot chocolate that you could ever think of. The only thing was it was on the outskirts of our small town, and it was about 20 minutes from where we were. Annoying, but well worth the taste. Now, the series of events that were about to unfold were ones that we would soon never forget. As we're driving on this quiet, snowy road, I began to notice this old dark blue minivan following us. I thought it was strange, but I figured they just wanted to pass by. I went ahead and slowed down, expecting him to drive off. However, the driver ended up almost bumping the back of our car, and then also almost caused us to swerve off the road. You can imagine my little sister started to cry, and I myself was furious. Now here's the strange part. The driver just suddenly takes off without any other question. Strange, but after getting our bearings, we ignored it. Ten minutes after the scare, we do arrive at that shop I mentioned. We go inside, and the owner, Anthony was his name, was there watching a movie on his small television. Since I was wearing my marine uniform, he wanted to know more about what I had been doing, mainly because I hadn't seen him in almost two and a half years. Safe to say, we spent the next 30 minutes catching up on life. I told him about my deployment and all the training we had been doing. Meanwhile, my little sister went into the back room where they had a Nintendo 64 set up for his kids. The thing is, they were currently with their grandparents out of town, and Anthony decided to work this last evening before closing for Christmas. Now, after talking for a good while, I decided it was now time for me to get my little sister so we can go home. I excuse myself to Anthony, and I make my way over to the back room. This was when it was about to happen. My sister was asleep, and knowing what a heavy sleeper she was, I spent the next minute trying to get her up, but nothing. Okay, whatever. I'll use the restroom in the meantime. As I'm doing my business, I started to hear yelling in the main shop. That was weird because it wasn't like Anthony to act that way. Moments later, I heard a loud gunshot echo throughout the store. Now seeing that I've heard many sounds of different weapons, I recognized this one almost immediately. It sounded like your typical 9mm pistol firing off. Something was wrong, and my training instantly has me checking up on my sister. She had now woken, and she was about to exit the room. Abigail, no, don't open the door, I ended up saying. Needless to say, I tell her to get on the phone and to call the police. Meanwhile, I would go check up on Anthony, 
which up to this point, had no idea whether or not he was alive or not. Now, here's the thing with this back room. Seeing as it's, well, in the back, you have to go down this long, dark hallway in order to reach the main shop. Needless to say, there's no cover. So I slowly open the door, and the loud, muffled voice from earlier becomes clear. What sounds like a man with a deep voice is now demanding Anthony give all the money he had to him. I'm not going to tell you again. Give me all the money you have. Otherwise, I won't be afraid to shoot you. I can still remember this armed man saying, as chills started to run down my spine. The thing is, I myself wasn't carrying, as I left all my equipment back at the house. So, left with no other option, I start tiptoeing my way over, as yet another couple of gunshots sounded off throughout the store. Anthony screams again, which causes this guy to grow even more angrier. By this point, I now have a clear view of the robber. He's got his back turned toward me, and he was wearing all dark clothing. Sure enough, I can see as he held this barrel of this pistol right up to Anthony's face. Anthony was doing all he could to act cool, but I could see the look of fear on his face. Even so, I could see him look over at me for a brief moment before looking back at the robber. Thank goodness he never did turn around, otherwise my cover would have been given away and I would have been shot. I was now within feet to this man when suddenly he pistol whips Anthony. That causes him to fall back, which now gave me the perfect opportunity to act. Without a moment's waste, I tackle this armed man from behind, which causes both of us to fall down to the floor. The next moments felt like an eternity, but it was only about 20 seconds. The armed man was strong, but I knew if I could get a hold of the weapon, this fight would be over. He held on to the pistol tightly as he fires yet again a couple of more rounds, missing me by a few inches. Eventually, I hear the click of it being empty, and I thought my worries were finally over. However, he reaches for something in his pocket. Then, I feel something sharp on my leg. Yup, sure enough, he had stabbed me with a small switchblade. Man, I still remember how much that stinged. But luckily, adrenaline had taken over, and I now had him in a proper hold, as I can hear police sirens approaching. By now, Anthony had gotten up, and he had helped me keep this guy down while officers came in. Needless to say, they ended up taking him away, without any further questions. Oh yeah, and remember the minivan I mentioned earlier in my story? The same one was right in front of the shop. Safe to say, he had planned to rob the store and it conveniently turned out to be the same one I was at. So, I spent the next few days getting better in the hospital, and then I returned home without any further complications. So yeah, that was the time I ended up being a hero. I want to say if it wasn't for my proper training I did as a marine, then things could have turned out so much more differently. Hey there, creepy fox. Here's a scary experience from a soldier, that being me. For this story, I'll refer to myself as Emily. I was 23 years old when this happened, and I was deployed out in Europe, where I live on an army base. Now, for privacy reasons and security reasons too, I can't tell you exactly where, but I can tell you I've been here since August of 2017. Okay, so with that, let me tell you a bit about myself. I'm an avid explorer, and I've grown up camping with my older brothers in the Alabama wilderness. Being the only girl in the family, I grew up to be tough. That was why I enlisted so that I could test my bravery. Plus, I also wanted to serve for my country. So it was the end of December, and we had some days off from training and the usual routines at the base. I figured as a way to get some time to myself, I would go camping out into the wilderness. Luckily for me, there is a large set of woods about 30 minutes from our base. This was actually a location we did our training in, and I figured this could be my getaway. Now, technically speaking, some of this area was closed off for military personnel, but there were some spots that were open for the public. Long story short, if you saw an area that said no trespassing and was fenced off, then you best listen to those signs. Now, I wasn't really interested in our military private grounds, but more so the areas that are open to the public, 
as they have these really nice views on top of a small mountain range. It is a bit of a climb, but it's one that's well worth the adventure. So since I'd already spent the last week packing for my trip, I left bright and early the first day of my four day break. With me I had a large backpack which contained your basic survival materials. I made sure to also pack my trusty handgun with me, just in case of an emergency. So I arrive around 6pm and I began the walk up into the woods. It would take me about an hour and a half to reach the place I needed to get to. As I was an hour into the walk, I ran into a couple of campers who had set up a small campsite. They were very friendly, and they ended up calling me over. After talking for a bit, I continued on with my walk. At this point, a light rain had started to fall, and I ended up taking cover below a large tree. As I sat there waiting for the rain to stop, I began to hear the sounds of branches breaking and the leaves being moved. I suddenly perked up as I focused on the noise. Figuring it might have been a small animal, though, I ended up ignoring it. However, after two or so minutes go by, I began to hear people speaking in German. Soon enough, two men who looked to be in their early 40s come into sight. These guys looked interesting, to say the least. Honestly, the best way I could describe them would be like stumbling upon some strange cult people out in the middle of nowhere. They were both bald and had long, unkept beards. They both wore large overalls, and each had a lantern, too. As a side note, that at this point, it had started to get dark. Now, they did spook me, but of course, I did have my sidearm with me. Anywho, they ended up noticing me, and then they began to walk toward me. Since they did speak in German, I was able to talk to them, as I had learned it growing up. Basically, the conversation goes a little bit something like this. Oh, would you look at that. What's a beautiful young woman like yourself doing out here all alone? I responded back by saying, Well, I'll tell you one thing I'm not doing. Being a little baby walking around with lanterns. What, are you afraid of the dark? Yeah, I remember how I said that as I was acting really tough. You think you're funny, girl, huh? Do you know what we do to people like you? Oh, please, don't make me laugh. What are you two going to do? Hmm, what do you think? There's two of us and one of you. No one will hear you scream. Do as we say, and no serious harm will come to you. Both of them then take out knives, and began to walk closer. Sure, I was being brave, but even that sight was a bit scary. Needless to say, I took out my handgun, and they suddenly both froze. You two really want to try your luck with me? Even if you try stepping closer, then no one's ever going to hear what I'm about to do to the two of you. Okay, sorry, we were just joking. Honestly, we didn't want to really hurt you, promise. Leave now, if I ever see the two of you again, I won't be so kind. Both of them then take off running into the woods. Now, I thought that was the end of my encounter, but unfortunately, this was just the beginning. At that point, I considered heading back to base, but I had already made it this far. Besides, I was armed, just as I mentioned before, and what would they do with the knives against my gun? Moving on, after 20 more minutes of waiting, the rain had now started to lighten up. Figuring that my adrenaline had also calmed down, I continue with no further issues. At this point, it's now 8.30pm, and I settle next to a cliffside that overlooks the woods. I'll tell you, that sight was absolutely stunning. Now, as I sat there, I began pondering more about the two strange men I encountered earlier. First off, I'd never seen them. Second, I encountered them in an area that was rarely traveled. This was mainly due to the fact that the trail was hidden and it was full of shrubbery and other trees. Really, unless you knew about it, you'd miss it. I digress. Fast forward about two hours later, around 10.30pm. There I was below the entrance of a small cave. I had a campfire and laid in the little sleeping bed I had brought with me, reading a book and relaxing. Eventually, my eyes got heavy and I was starting to get sleepy. I slept for approximately 20 minutes when suddenly I was awoken by what sounds like rocks and gravel being moved. I instantly shot up from my sleep, and I scanned the immediate area with my eyes. Nothing. 
guess my paranoia was getting to me. Besides, no way those two from earlier would return after what I had shown them. I laid back to sleep, where eventually I passed out from exhaustion. Around 4 a.m., nature was calling, and I had to get up to use the restroom. I made my walk over to a set of trees where I began to do my business. Once I was done, and I was about to leave, I could see two figures walking up to my campsite. They were tall, and they appeared to look like the men I'd seen from earlier. They were at a distance, mind you. This time, the men appeared to have had axes. I kid you not. And what happens next, I couldn't believe. From where I was, I could see as they each took turns swinging at my little sleeping bag I had there. Since I had my blankets and pillows laying in a certain way, they must have thought I was in there. After 30 seconds, they yelled out in frustration and trashed my campsite, finally throwing most of everything into the campfire. After that, they walk off into the dark, and I no longer see them. Yeah, you can imagine how scared I was at that point. These two really tracked me down, and from the looks of it, were waiting until I fell asleep to act. Sadly, there wasn't much I could save since most of it was burned, and in summary, I made the hour and a half walk back in 45 minutes since I no longer had any of my supplies to slow me down. Luckily, my jeep had remained untouched, and I make it back to base. Safe to say, my fellow soldiers had told me never to go camping out there alone. Turned out, a couple of months ago, some people had gone missing while camping. I'm not sure if those two from that night had anything to do with it, but I know I never want to encounter them ever again. I'm a United States Army veteran, and I've seen a couple of tours around the world. I've been in many conflicts, and I've seen some of the most gruesome sights you could ever think of. Now, I spent a lot of time out in the woods, and also in the deserts in over 100 degree weather. Pretty much, you gave me a weapon, you told me where to go, and I was on it. I mention this because my training ended up saving me in a way. After serving for 15 years, I moved back into my hometown of Wasilla, Alaska, and I transitioned into becoming an Alaskan state trooper. I'll tell you, going back into civilian life did take a bit of getting accustomed to. I lost many fellow brothers, and it did take its toll on me. However, with the help of my fellow police officers and Alaskan state troopers, I was able to recover quite easily. Anyway, one day while out on patrol, I received a call over the radio. I guess there was a family concerned with their grandpa not picking up the phone. He hadn't answered in the past couple of days, and they were getting worried. See, he lived out in a cabin about an hour up into the mountains, but the family had been out of town, thus not able to go see him. Therefore, I was going to go ahead and do a checkup on his well-being. So I made the hour drive up into the mountains, and I arrive on his property. The place looked absolutely abandoned. Seriously, the place looked like it's seen its better days. So anyways, I exit the cruiser and I make my way up to the door. And I say, Hello, Mr. Johnson. This is Officer Anderson. I'm here to check up on you. Your family called and they've been worried sick about you. Can you come out here and talk to me? No response. Okay, that was starting to worry me a bit. I return back to my vehicle where I would look up more information on my computer. One thing I have yet to mention was my door was acting up. For some reason, it would lock itself and I would have to struggle to open it. This is important, I promise. After a minute, I managed to get it open and I called the police station. Hey, be advised, I arrived at the house of Mr. Johnson, but he hasn't responded. I'm going to go ahead and check out the rest of the property. That's a 10-4, Anderson. Just be careful out there. An officer responded back to me. I now make my way back to the home, and then I hear the sound of something closing. I look back, and the door closes on itself. Guess it didn't help that it was windy. Whatever. I figured I would deal with the car door not opening once I checked out the house. I proceed to look through each of the windows, and I can see the place was abandoned. But there are no signs of anyone. And again, my worries are getting worse. But luckily, I was able to find that the back door was still open, 
so I use this as an opportunity to see what I could uncover. I start making my way checking each room, and this is when I began to hear heavy footsteps. Mr. Johnson, are you in here? Hello? This is Officer Anderson. I'm here to check up on you. No sound of a person, but I do hear what sounds like an animal, growling. Actually, it sounded just like a bear. I made my way around to another corner, heading to a room that I couldn't see from outside. And sure enough, there is a large bear going through a bin of clothing. I froze in that moment. My training has seen me fight off some of the most violent people you could ever imagine. But a bear? You see, I must have startled it because it started chasing after me. I pretty much book it, heading back toward the door I had come from, and I jump outside and grab my sidearm, ready to defend myself if it came to it. That bear wasn't stopping, and it kept coming after me. I knew now I couldn't outrun it, so I had to get inside my police cruiser. Of course, the door was stuck, and I struggled to get it open. All the while, this bear is continuing to charge toward me. I fired a couple of shots, but this didn't seem to do anything. Great, this was how it ended, I told myself. Not fighting bad guys, but being eaten by a bear for dinner. I did the next best thing. I had no time to get to the other door, so I hid and crawled underneath the cruiser and pointed toward the bear, ready to fire. Just then, another sound that made me freeze. I heard the sound of a shotgun discharge. It's now at this moment the fear of the bear disappeared, and the memory of hearing shots like that while fighting along my brothers hit me like many flashbacks. I did snap out of it when I could hear somebody yelling. Finally, the bear seemed to have given up and ran off into the woods. I was confused. Who had fired the shotgun, and why were they yelling? Well, sure enough, it was Mr. Johnson. I guess he had gone out for a while, and he managed to come back when the bear started chasing me. Needless to say, he scared it off, and I thanked him for his help as he explained to me that his phone hadn't been working. That was the reason why he hadn't answered any of the calls. Also, we later determined that the bear had managed to sneak into the home because Mr. Johnson had forgotten to close the door all the way. So it's safe to say had Mr. Johnson not got in there when he did, I was going to become dinner. Hey everyone, thanks for making it to the end of today's episode. If this is the first time you've clicked on one of my videos, then consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell beside it. On the Creepy Fox channel, we feature scary stories sent in from subscribers, which is really awesome because chances are you're going to hear stories that you haven't heard on any other channels. Also, if you'd like to be part of this and you'd like to share your story for a future episode, then consider sharing your story with me using my user submissions email. You can find it in all my videos. You can see it right now on the top of the screen too. It's TCF Narrations at gmail.com. I'd love to feature you. Now, with all those formalities out of the way, how are all of you doing? Myself? Well, I'm trying to record this outro, but the neighbor is making a lot of noise, so if you end up hearing noise in the background, I'm sorry, I'm trying my best here, but uh, it always seems like whenever I'm recording any of these outros, it always seems to be in the outros, he starts to make noise. He's like, haha, you're trying to record? I'm not going to let that happen in peace. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, this is the first video of 2022. It's crazy to think that um, when I put out the final video of 2021, which was the security guard stories, I was kind of like, oh yeah, I still got another week of uh, uploads for the year. But then I looked at the calendar and I was like, what? We're already at the end of the year? <laughs> so that was uh, that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, um, I spent the last few days of uh, 2021 just, you know, relaxing with the family and uh, just, uh, you know, being very, very happy with, uh, you know, all the support that all of you have been showing me here on the channel, whether you've been here since the beginning whether you just found me a couple weeks ago or you've been here for a few months, I really appreciate all the support you've been showing me. So as for plans for the 2022 upload schedule, it's going to pretty much more or less be the same thing. You'll be getting uh, scary stories at least hopefully once a week. Um, as you saw in this episode, 
Uh, if you are somebody that's been around for a while, uh, then you probably saw that these were actually remastered and re-recorded stories that I featured in the past on here before. Um, I uploaded these stories back in 2019, but obviously since then we've gotten a huge incredible amount of subscriptions uh, since then. And uh, since I had removed that video a long while ago, I wanted to go ahead and, you know, re-record, re-remaster, and reintroduce these stories again to those who never got a chance to listen to them, while at the same time not just getting the same audio files and just putting them into a video, I wanted to, you know, make sure like, hey, if you're going to be getting the military stories, it sounds as best as possible for your listening experience and your listening pleasure. So yeah, apologies in advance if you've already heard these stories. Again, I just wanted to make sure that those that are brand new around here or those who are just finding the channel for the first time through this video, they get to hear these stories uh, without missing them. As always, I'd love to say thank you to all my amazing channel members who have been supporting me with my uploads and with the channel in general. Of course, thank you to all the regular viewers who come out to watch the videos, leave comments, leave likes, and share them with their family. And considering that, you know, we covered military stories, if you're in the military or you've served in the military, I'd like to say thank you for your service. And with that, friends, we're going to go ahead and call it a day. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care and have an amazing day.